Welcome back. Before we begin, we're going to explain a few things that you need to be aware of whenever you're using the DRS2 plugin. We created a very simple scene that will allow us to work faster with the functions of the plugin. However, at the end of the course, we are going to show you how you can use the plugin in a real case scenario on a production model. The DRS2 plugin is compatible with the folder system of ZBrush. However, whenever you're using folders, you need to make sure that you keep all your folders open before running any functions of the plugin. To do that, hold down Shift and click on any of your folders. You must also make sure that all subtools have unique names. You can do that by using the rename all functions, so let's begin by opening the general tab. Type a name. Now we can use the plugin. Most of the plugin's buttons are self-explanatory, however, if you hover your mouse over a button, it will give you a pop-up explaining what this button is doing. To make things even easier, we also added instructions, messages, and warnings that will pop up on specific functions explaining all the steps that you need to take before continuing. We designed most of the functions to run on the visible subtools. So for example, if you have a scene that has multiple invisible subtools and you want to run the function for all the subtools, all you have to do is hold on Shift and click on the visibility icon of any subtool. Now we can run the function for all the subtools. All functions that run on visible subtools will say so on a pop-up if you hover your mouse over the functions button. To give you an example, let's hide a few subtools. And let's run the add prefix button. As you can see, it only added the prefix on the visible subtools. Now, as we explained earlier, because most of the plugin's buttons are self-explanatory, what we are going to do in order to cover a bit more ground, we are going to explain these two buttons here, and then we will briefly open the Morph Target tab. Then, we will skip down to the Align tab. We will cover the Visibility tab later on, when we will be working on the production model. We all know the all low and all high functions inside of ZBrush. However, for better performance reasons, we sometimes want to lower down the subdivision levels of only a few of our subtools. We can do that by using the subdivision step lower and subdivision step higher buttons for all our visible subtools. So for example, let's hide a few of our subtools. And then let's run the subdivision step lower button. Clicking once will take all the visible subtools one step lower in the subdivision slider. So you can simply click as many times as you need if you want to take your subtools even lower in the subdivision slider. And as you can see, the only subtools that got affected were the ones that were visible. We can do the same thing for the subdivision step higher button. So for example, let's take all our subtools to the lowest subdivision by clicking the All Low button. And then let's use the Subdivision Step Higher button. Now let's bring everything back. And as you can see, the only subtools that got affected were the ones that were visible again. Before we continue, let's open the Morph Target tab. And here you can find functions for storing, switching, and deleting more targets for all visible subtools. These functions can be very helpful, especially when you are importing many models from another 3D application like Maya or Max, and you want to store the current topology and UVs before sculpting any details inside of ZBrush. Now let's talk about the functions under the Align tab. The first one is called Match Size, and it will allow you to match the size of a selected subtool to the size of another visible subtool. To do that, we first need to hide all the subtools. So hold down Shift and click on the visibility icon of any subtool. And then let's bring back the two subtools that we want to match their sizes. Then simply select the subtool that you want to change its size and click the Match Size button. And as you can see, the selected subtool changed its size to match the size of the other subtool. In the same manner, if you want to align the two subtools, you can use the Align to Subtools button. Click OK on the pop-up. 
and the two subtools get aligned. Before we cover the Align Subtool Morph Target button, we are going to talk about the last one called Explode and Align All Subtools Morph Target. This function is great for whenever you want to explode your models for baking purposes without having to create cages. So let's do that. When you click on the button, it will give you instructions about what you need to do before running this function. It will ask you to check whether the expose is set to zero under the transform menu, and you must also make sure that all subtools stay in the same position and size when switching morph targets. So let's click cancel and go to the transform menu and make sure that X, Y, and Z axis are enabled and expose is set to zero. Now to test the distance of all the subtools when they get exploded, hold on Shift and X. And if you want to increase the distance, go under your preferences, open the interface tab, open the expose tab, and increase the expose clearance slider. Let's try that again. Hold on Shift and X. And repeat that. Now that we have a better distance, let's continue. Let's put everything back to place. So let's hold on Shift and X. And then let's click the Explode and Align All Subtools Morph Target. Let's click OK on the pop up. All right, so now we have all our subtools exploded, duplicated. The duplicates are labeled empty aligned, which are basically our lowest models. And then these lowest models are aligned over the highest models. Now, if for whatever reason you need to reposition a subtool and realign it with its morph target, all you have to do is to delete its current empty aligned subtool that was generated earlier. Then select the subtool that you want to reposition and using the history slider go back a few steps until you see it jump back to its original position. Do not simply press Ctrl Z to undo as this can reset all the subtools to their original positions. Then we duplicate the subtool, select the original and reposition it. Next, we will hide all the subtools besides the original and the duplicate and select the duplicate. Now let's click on the Align Subtool Move Target button. A pop-up will appear with all the instructions that we just set, so let's click OK. Great, let's bring back everything. And now the subtool is successfully repositioned and aligned. You can repeat the process for any subtool that needs to be repositioned. In the next chapter, we are going to work with a production model and show you how to use the most powerful features of the DRS2 plugin in order to explode your models, create cages for them, and then export all your models into Substance Painter to bake your mama maps.